Hi everybody, it's been a while that I've made videos on my work, which means the pile of just for fun projects has become a little bit bigger. And out of those, let's start with the most boring, a 22 Dragoon of rifle. There have been some guys out there who were using an airsoft rifle like this and throwing some Savage or Marlin 60 action in there and just using the airsoft rifle as an outer shell. I wanted to have a dedicated build and it should not be visible from the outside that it is just a 22. But otherwise it's just a straight blowback action, as boring as it can be. But first impressions can be deceiving. So let's take a look under the hood. Okay, let's start with a fully disassembled gun and then we work our way back from there. So we got our bolt here with extractor, firing pin, that slot plays a role later on, keep that in mind. Free floating transfer piece, striker, guide rod spring for the bolt carrier and the fire control group, that's pretty much it. We got a full length 26 inch barrel, it's a 22 barrel liner I put into the original outer barrel of the airsoft gun. The problem with these airsoft guns is that their receivers and other parts are not very rigid. They are either cheap toy-like plastic or, like in this case, uh, pot metal zinc alloy. And I didn't want to remove any material from the receiver. And there's a crossbar in the magwell, which limits how far to the front I can go with my 22 magazine insert. Well, there we go. I cannot go farther to the front. So why does that constitute a problem? Let's have a look how the ejection on a regular 22 blowback action works. Got you some old Ruger pistol. There you got your bolt, extractor claw, all the other parts are missing are not important for the moment. There is your fixed to the receiver ejector. So now the extractor grabs the rim of the shell casing. If I'm now pulling the bolt back with sufficient speed, the fixed ejector or the shell casing will hit the fixed ejector and we're just getting ejected out of the ejection port, like this. I cannot do this here. Why? If that would be a one-piece bolt design like that Ruga. Let's get this guy together first. And there you go. And now we put a shell casing here. If I would now do the same like with a Ruger pistol, the shell casing would just get ejected to the inside of the bolt carrier. It could not leave the action. So the bolt carrier is actually in the way of ejection. So the easiest way would be to just cut an ejection port into the bolt carrier and eject through that. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to keep the outside of the gun like the original. A buddy of mine proposed, why don't you eject to the left side? Just make an opening at the top cover somewhere here and that would at least leave your right side untouched. Well, this is such a disgusting idea. No wonder that I never had that one. His other proposal was, um, how about ejecting downwards? What's that? Well. The rear of the outer magazine body is empty, hollow. There's just your 22 magazine insert and the rest of that there's nothing in there. So just leave the top of the magazine there open and inject into the outer magazine body and when you remove the magazine just check those shell casings out. Well, this is a less disgusting idea, but I still wanted to have shell casings flying out of the ejection port, so that was a no-go as well. So what we have to do here is the bolt has to go backwards, push the bolt carrier backwards as well, then the bolt stops and then the bolt carrier has to travel farther back and clear the ejection port. That's the task here and let me assemble a few parts and then we will take it from there. Okay, now we got the almost completely assembled gun. The first issue I had with this was that the bolt was pushing the bolt carrier back, but then the bolt returned to the front without cocking the striker, but the bolt carrier made it all the way to the back. What's the problem here? The bolt is too light. 
it doesn't have enough impulse, enough mass inertia to act against the striker spring. So now I would have to make the bolt heavier and the bolt carrier more lightweight. First problem, I already had taken enough material out of the, as much as possible, out of the bolt carrier. So that was not an option. There exists an aluminum bolt carrier for this type of rifle. This was the CO2 variant with a pot metal zinc alloy bolt carrier, but uh, the green gas variant where the bolt is cycling back and forth with each shot has an aluminum bolt carrier and usually you can buy all these parts separately at the big airsoft retailers. But at the time when I was working on this guy, it was out of stock everywhere, so that was not an option either. And it would have been a very time-consuming task anyway to find that sweet spot where the bolt is heavy enough and uh, the bolt carrier light enough that everything works. So what do we do here? I me mechanically lock the bolt to the bolt carrier. And that happens with this spring-loaded lever at the end of the bolt carrier, which interacts with that slot in the bolt that I showed you previously. So what happens here now? The bolt pushes the bolt carrier back all the way, all the way, all the way, scocking the firing pin. And at the next moment, there's a cam track in the fire control group which interacts with that lever. The lever is getting pushed to the side so that the bolt disengages from the bolt carrier. The bolt stays in the rear position. The bolt carrier travels all the way to the rear. And there we got the clear ejection port. Okay, once again, guy goes to the front. Don't want to dry fire the gun even though I left out the transfer piece. Once again, there is the cam track in the fire control group that interacts with that lever. The bolt goes rearwards, rearwards, cocks the firing pin, striker. The next moment, bolt is getting disengaged from the bolt carrier. The bolt carrier makes it all the way to the rear and there is my ejection port. So far so good. So now let's have a look at the ejection itself. There is a shell casing in front of the bolt. The bolt carrier moves backwards. There we got our spring-loaded ejector lever. And more to the rear, more to the rear, more to the rear and there it kicks out my shell casing. Okay, let's have a closer look at the ejection. The bolt carrier is moving back and at some point my ejector is getting suddenly released. I call it ejector or ejector lever. It's both the same. It's just one part. And it's going back this way. From another angle, this is my little ratchet lever. It doesn't matter in what position it is. So the ejector will always hit it in the right way. Sudden release and then smoothly straighten out again. Okay, now everything has to go back to the front. And there's the next problem that my ejector is interfering with feeding of the next cartridge. Like this. And even if there's no cartridge in the magazine anymore, the ejector would simply slam into the rear end of the barrel. So, what we have to do first here is straighten out the ejector. To straighten out my ejector, I somehow have to hold back my bolt. Now let's try to grab the tail end here. So I'm holding back the bolt and now the bolt carrier can go forward and push the ejector out of the way. So how do I hold back the bolt? Well, let's have an even closer look under the hood. There is a protrusion here the top cover and this protrusion interacts with this tail end of the ejector just sitting like here and now I'm holding back the ejector which is attached to the bolt and this way I'm holding back the bolt now the bolt carrier is moving forward pushing the lever out of the way and when that is accomplished the tail end of the ejector disengages with a protrusion at the top cover and everything is going forward. Once again, everything is going back. The ejector is engaging with a protrusion at the top cover. 
port carrier is moving forward, straighten out the ejector, tail end of the ejector is disengaging with the protrusion, the top cover and everything is going back to the front. One more time, uh, with the recoil spring and the recoil spring guide for the board carrier installed. Dry fire it. And there's your trigger reset. This might be a good example for an engineering class. You solve one problem, but right off the bat creates the next problem, and then the next problem, and the next problem. If you're good at what you're doing, you can solve all these things, but every once in a while you might want to take a step back and check, are we still on track, or are things going somehow sideways here? Me, just for my personal entertainment, I can build me whatever wicked shit comes to my mind. And I had to prove that Germans can design with 20 parts what everybody else can do with five. You have to keep up a certain image here. But is there a more simple approach to my initial requirements? Of course, there is. So for demo purposes, I made me a simple wooden model. If I would have tried to do this in SolidWorks, geez, the last time I worked in that program was about 2015. That would have cost me quite a few temper tantrums, so this was way more relaxing and simple. So here we got our bolt. Not really our bolt carrier, it's an ejection port cover that externally mimics the look of the bolt carrier, connecting lever and the hammer. So what's happening? If you fire the gun, hammer's going forward. There's my ejection port cover going to the rear and opening up my ejection port. A fraction of a second later the bolt is going to the rear, re-engages with the ejection port cover, and that's it. Once again. So now at this moment the empty shell casing is getting ejected, like here, and then the bolt goes all the way to the rear and drags the ejection port cover back to the front. So there are two situations here that might be considered, so if you have a misfire and end up like this, and your cartridge is sitting here, misfire, that means the cartridge did not ignite, it's not that unusual, especially with the rimfire ammo. Just pull the charging handle to the front to re-engage with the bolt. And now you pull the charging handle to the rear. But now you end up with the situation I described in my design that you would eject the cartridge against the inside of the ejection port cover. So first you would have to remove the magazine, then the cartridge would bounce off the ejection port cover and drop down the mag well. Same thing if you want to Unload the gun, you remove the magazine, pull the charging handle back, and the remaining cartridge in the barrel is getting extracted and it's dropping down the mag well. This design could be realized with a regular blowback action, fixed ejector, the weight of the ejection port cover doesn't really count here, it's not part of the recoiling mass. Of course you want to keep it a relatively lightweight, because it's slamming back into the receiver, and the bolt has to be able to easily drag it back forwards, but otherwise the precise weight is irrelevant. So this is the most simple solution I came up with, but it is boring. And that's why I didn't build it. So for the magazine insert, I used a Black Dog 15 round AR-15 magazine. I like these because they have metal magazine lips. So this, I acquired a couple of those, was initially intended for a different project, like this. Can somebody already tell me what this might be going for? I just wanted to cut off these lips from that airsoft magazine housing and grind off the back strap here and then this should fit like a glove. Mm -hmm. What's it going for? There you go. That has the potential to become a finished project someday. Whoa, 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 hold your horses. Before everybody starts to ask for a dedicated 22 FAMAS with a reversible ejection, I got a million projects in a pipeline that are way more interesting to me than that. 
so I wouldn't hold my breath over this one. But speaking of interesting, this guy here was a very interesting experiment and my next video will be about that journey. See you around.